How do you explain so many errors in the summer report led by yourself? Sorry? Have you thought to resign? Sorry? Have you thought to resign? Uh, I've already answered that question. There is one mistake that occurred, unfortunately, and we have clearly accepted that. We have expressed regret that it took place. But there's a huge volume of science over there. I mean, the IPCC fourth assessment report is a massive piece of work. And I think all of what we have said over there is totally valid. So I don't think the, the audience here, or for that matter, anywhere else in the world, would be distracted by this one single error about the Himalayan glaciers. So I, I would say that the science, if anything, is as compelling as one would expect it to be. We've now had the example whereby the IPCC, in its synthesis report, the most important part, which Mr. Pachari, Dr. Pachari, has control, said that there, was a fifth, there would be a 50% drop in crop yields in Africa from, uh, by 2020. We now discover that that um, is based on an advocacy group in Canada on the basis of one scientist in Morocco who's not even a climate scientist. Indeed, he's more involved in carbon trading. And even he was only referring to Morocco. How can you take it seriously? Well, as I said in the Times article only yesterday, that again is the type of information that should never have been seen in the IPCC. It meant the author misused information and it means the peer review of both experts and governments missed it. We have to tighten up the preparation and the peer review process. You're the scientific advisor, didn't you see it? Um, I was not involved in the fourth assessment report. Uh, that but you must have read it. Uh, that, but it's 6,000 pages. But you're I was the, the chief, chief science advisor. You're uh, advising our climate change minister. Not then. I was the chief scientist of well, the World Bank. Well, do you hope we can catch up now? Pun. Oh, yeah, and that's why I said yesterday well, it was a fundamental mistake. Same as I said it was a fundamental mistake on the Himalayan globe. So as soon as these mistakes came to light, I've been interviewed by both television and I, I understand and that. And, and we're grateful for to have you here today. But when you, it, you don't really need the Sunday Times Insight team to get down to the bottom of this. So much of what the IPCC has told us is peer-reviewed science turns out to be sourced to advocacy groups, green lobbyists who are not peer-reviewed and have a vested interest. Why didn't you spot that in the IPCC report as a former chairman? As a former chairman, I was working by that time on many other issues for the World Bank on development, biodiversity, agriculture. I was not actually involved in the climate debate at that particular time. This is why when these mistakes are coming to light, we need to bring them to light same mistakes were made, but this is a very, very small part of the IPCC documents, a very minor well, part. Well, except that at the moment we're just beginning to go through it, perhaps with the kind of scrutiny that we should have gone through it from the start, and every time we do, something pops up. In a convention like this, in which you have been limited by the importance of the organ that you have, you should explain the numerous errors that we have discovered in the last few days in the report of the IPCC, including in the report of the synthesis that you have said yourself, the ecological organizations in place of scientists, introduce data related to the production of the Africa or the surface of the land that was formed. Well, there are no errors. There's, there's what, there is one error which we have acknowledged, which was in respect of the melting of the Himalayan glaciers. But let me emphasize that the others are not errors, and it is perfectly valid to use non-peer-reviewed literature, provided we look at the source of information that is contained in that non-peer-reviewed literature and make sure that it's authentic. You must realize that there are some parts of the world where you really don't have published research material and therefore it has been the practice of the IPCC to use non-peer-reviewed literature with of course a lot of caveats and careful authentic authentication of the source of that information. And what you're pointing out is really not correct. We have investigated these so-called errors. They are not errors. And we are absolutely certain that what we have said over there can be substantiated on the basis of scientific information. Except for the case that I mentioned, the Himalayan glaciers, where it was said that uh, um, the glaciers would melt, would vanish by 2035. And that error we have 
acknowledged and have put uh, a note on the IPCC website, which I would request you to, to look at carefully. Sí, simplemente por alusiones. Entonces, niega usted que eh, se doble la superficie del Anda que está bajo el nivel del mar en su informe o que se diga que la producción agrícola del norte de África va a caer la mitad en 2020 por el calentamiento? It would take me about 20 minutes to explain the details to you. I, I'm not too sure whether that's the purpose of this press conference. But uh, you're most welcome to write to the IPCC Secretariat and they'll give you a detailed account. We have already computed all the reasons for what we have stated and they'll be happy to respond to you and give you these details, right? We've been joined by climate change skeptic Professor Fred Singer and Professor Bob Watson. He's the Chief Scientific Advisor at the Department of the Environment and therefore not a skeptic. Professor Singer, what is the single biggest reason that makes you think that this whole business of CO2 and global warming isn't true? Uh, we see no evidence in the climate record that the increase in carbon dioxide, which is real, has made any appreciable difference in the climate. Temperature. Yeah, we don't dispute that the, that the carbon dioxide has increased, and I do believe that it is a greenhouse gas, and it's plausible, plausible, that there should be a detectable effect. But as we analyze the data, we don't see the effect of co increasing carbon dioxide. For example, the models cannot explain why there hasn't been a warming in the last 10 years. Why is it cooling? Why carbon dioxide is rising? So it shows CO2 emissions still rising, but temperatures have not been rising. If anything, they've been in a either static or a modi modest decline. Absolutely correct. There is no question, however, there have been some mistakes in some of the IPCC documents, and we have to understand how those mistakes got through and rectify it for the future, because clearly it is undermining public confidence in the evidence. We're joined now by the Chief Scientist of the Department for the Environment, Professor Robert Watson. Welcome to the Daily Thank Politics. You. We've had suppression of scientific data, we've had exaggeration of global warming impacts, and the maltreatment of skeptics. What's gone wrong? The evidence for human-induced climate change is extremely solid. There is no question, however, there have been some mistakes in some of the IPCC documents, and we have to understand how those mistakes got through and rectify it for the future, because clearly it is undermining public confidence in the evidence. But as I say, the evidence is absolutely solid. I understand that's your position, but, you know, the first chair of the IPCC, John Houghton, I think he was your predecessor, because you were chairman of the IPCC too, weren't you? I chaired the overall IPCC. You're right. Uh, he said, quote, unless we announce disasters, no one will listen. And I hope, are you sleeping easy? Are I'm sleeping, sleeping easy. easy. I've got a lot of work to do, but I always work around the clock. Yes. I got to work at 2 a.m. yesterday, and uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 2 a.m. this morning. Yes. And the day before, I got to work at 6 o'clock in the morning. Travel less, go into the Himalayas and reflect upon the mistakes that you may have made. I have not made any mistake. I accept responsibility for the one mistake on the Himalayan glaciers. Otherwise, I can tell you the IPCC would not have reached this level of effectiveness and uh, credibility were it not for the fact that we've done a very good job. And R. K. Pachori's Himalayan blunder. Richard North, a British journalist who wrote the Daily Telegraph story alleging Pachori gained inappropriate financial benefits from his links with carbon trading companies, has now openly suggested that the IPCC chairman stepped down from his post. In an exclusive telephone interview to Times Now, Dr. North has said that if Pachori does not resign voluntarily, he'll be forced to do so. I have no intentions of resigning from my position. I was elected by acclamation um, by all the countries of the world. If uh, people still persist for whatever reasons with their views that are contrary to facts, then they are at liberty to do so. But I have nothing further to say on the subject. I was born a Brahmin. And I do think actually the IPCC has probably passed its sell-by date.